Hi, Andrew here. This is a video that I've been wanting to do, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> this is the gear that failed me in the last year or so. I want you to understand what this video is before you comment or do anything. This is more of a series of stories related to gear rather than me just taking a crap on a bunch of actual specific gear items. There are a couple instances where it was definitely the failure on the part of the actual item I'm talking about that should be highlighted. But there's a couple other things I'm talking about too that I think ultimately don't fall to the fault of the gear. They're just interesting stories of something not working. And I just thought you guys would like to see this. I'm trying to make my channel a little bit more real. And I see a lot of stuff come in. And honestly, the overall quality level of the stuff that I get is generally very reliable. I at least strive for reliable gear if I'm gonna be spending money on it. And certainly I'm not gonna be like taking free unreliable gear. <laughs> so these are just some of the things that definitely did not work out for me in the last year. And I hope that you find them interesting. Okay, let's ease into this with some things that I can just straight away say they're rubbish. I shouldn't have bought them. I should have known better. And that's the cheap Chinese crab phone accessories. An easy one. This is a Speedgen kickstand iPhone 6 Plus case. It's a two-piece case. And on paper, of course, the construction looked pretty interesting to me. You know, the rigid outer construction and the rubber inner construction to protect it from a variety of types of damage. But kickstand just broke right off. It was a little plastic kickstand and the hinges for the kickstand were just in the plastic leg and as soon as I got it I thought well that's gonna break soon and I actually got probably about oh six months of use out of it. Second thing is uh, cheap iPhone lenses that you just clip on and these are iGo macros. I think I paid five bucks for these on Amazon and the optical quality of these is just so rubbish. I can't even imagine ever using it on the channel here. The macro doesn't even focus. I mean, it's just $5 down the drain. Here's what's left of my wife's Adam AO. It's always a little embarrassing when you, you know, proudly show your wife the flashlight that you chose her and explain how it's just what she needs, nothing more, and it should be a good, reliable flashlight, and then she loses the top. <laughs> this is a little more than a year old, but this Eagle Tech D25 AAA would be an awesome EDC flashlight if it wasn't for the absolute rubbish clip, which I actually intentionally broke off right away so that I knew that this would not have a clip on it. Considering how much I EDC my Casey Lynch pry bar, as he's titled it, the All Access Pass, you'd think that when I got a multi-tool that had more utility built into it, that I would carry it just as much. And you would think also that if it had a better, more tough material than titanium, that I would be more willing to beat on it. That is just not what happened at all when I got this Cha Ho Cha EDC card from Kickstarter. It was just uh, one of those things I thought, hey, this looks cool, this looks like something I'd use. And this is not a, a fault at all of a complex one-piece multi-tool complex in the sense of having a wide array of different tools. It's just uh, a little thick, and this is S35 VN steel. Uh, it's heavy. And so I carried it in my wallet for a day, didn't like it. Carried it in my back pocket for a day, didn't like it. And so it's just sat. I don't know, do you think these one-piece multi-tools have a place in an EDC rotation? Because so far, utility has been super limited in my opinion. Here's a minor one that I think could easily be remedied. And it's just a couple problems with the Leatherman style PS. These probably fall into my problem slash easy fix. First of all, you'll notice a little bit of rust issues here. And honestly, since this thing's in and out of my pocket, it was during the summer. And it's for sure been dropped with my keychain on the ground a number of times, even during the winter. It's probably the kind of thing that these little bits of rust that you can see even here on the blade and on the frame of the multi-tool are something that could be remedied by some kind of lubricant spray. They're um, giving them like a semi-bead blast and finish, which is just not very good for 
uh, rust prevention, but it's also probably just a maintenance issue. The second thing which you probably notice here is the spring on the scissors on this thing completely broke, which pretty much makes these scissors useless. Now it isn't like a Victoria Knox Swiss Army knife where you can replace the springs. I'm gonna have to send this to Leatherman and they're, they're awesome about replacing their stuff so I'm sure that I'll be able to get it done. But it is a gear failure so I figured I'd show you. Here's a genuinely disappointing gear fail for me. This is my beloved Seiko SKX 009. I've previously reviewed it on this channel and I just love the patina that it has on it. But the power reserve completely quit on me in the last year. And the fail story is not so much that the movement needs to be serviced. I mean, that's normal. This is a, a watch that's probably about 10 years old, so I am not upset about the movement needing a service at all. What's disappointing to me is actually the fact that I brought it to my local watchmaker, and he sat on it for about three months. And then I had to call him, and he had not worked on it, waited for another month, and he let me know that it was in the mail after I had gotten in touch with him again. The end of the story isn't there. I got it back and the power reserve still doesn't work. So the story is, is that, you know, mechanical watches sometimes need care from someone that you can trust and not just someone who's local. Guys, let me know in the comments below if I should try to work things out with this watchmaker and get him to fix it for me again or if I should just take it somewhere else. I'm more inclined to think that I'll just have it go somewhere that I know it can be fixed. There are some great Seiko repair guys on the internet that it might cost a little more than getting it serviced locally, but I would like to just get this running again. And here is a gear fail that I think might be a little bit controversial. This is the Thrunite TN36UT, an incredibly powerful flashlight that I featured in a video with the Nightcore EAX Hammer, basically talking about high horsepower flashlights. This thing is insane. It's like about 7,000 lumens. I don't know the exact specifications off the top of my head. But the problem with this thing was, okay, a couple of things. And this is touching on the YouTube gear review community, so I thought it would be interesting. First of all, this was sent to me for review by Thrunite, a complimentary flashlight, so quite a nice thing to send me. And it was my first product review with them. It was a $200 flashlight. Well, when I did the initial review, it was after taking this flashlight on some trips to my local state park where there are some fantastic caves. And we had done some spelunking with my family. and. Basically, uh, the light had taken a little bit of a beating when I had gone into some of these caves. I mean, it was great to have all of this flood and all this power to see, you know, hundreds of feet into some of these caves that we were crawling in. But the problem was is that it developed some intermittent flashing, some intermittent uh, hesitancy in the light. And I took it apart and cleaned it and put the batteries in, made sure the batteries are fine. And the problem persisted. It was definitely a problem with the light. And I contacted through and said, hey, look, you sent me this thing for review. I've actually been using it and it's broken. What do you want to do? And it was just complete radio silence on there and they didn't have anything to tell me. They didn't want it back. They didn't want to send me another one. It was kind of ridiculous, actually. You send me something for review and it breaks and you don't even follow up with me about it. So you won't be seeing any more through nights on this channel. Oddly enough, this flashlight has started working again for me after having it sit for a couple months. I don't really know what it is, but it's uh, definitely fine now. Um, it's bright, really bright. Here's a larger thing that I got that just has not been working out the greatest. This is a watch box that Aviate sent me to review along with a couple of their watches, including this Hawker Hurricane here. And I really like the Hawker Hurricane, especially out of the watches I've reviewed from them. Uh, this case, super handsome looking. It's like a suede leatherette, nice display. This is brass here. It just looks really nice. Problem is, is the construction is just really cheap. On the inside here, this is just stapled in and it frequently comes out. It actually arrived with this not even in there. I thought I had received a defective product, but you uh, had to put it in yourself when it came. It was just lying on the, the inside of the case here. The other problem is, is you can see the um, display case here is kind of um, loose, just coming out. Uh, that's just because this inner liner here, this felt inner liner is just like another piece of cardboard that's pressed in here. The box itself has some nice touches like these nice hinges and 
it is a wood frame um, so it's definitely sturdy and has a nice feel but for what you'd be paying for this box new I definitely would not recommend it in fact there really aren't a lot of great affordable watch boxes out there you have to spend a couple hundred dollars to get one that's made out of real wood finished consistently well inside and out and has nice hinges and nice you know pillows and everything I, I think it's just worth probably spending the money on that and that's probably something I'll be doing this year as well these are the Sennheiser PC3s. I got this headset for the Gear Geeks Live podcast, which is on hiatus now. But I wanted to mention that the distortion from the voice mic was just atrocious. And they were pretty much useless to me. So that was unfortunate. One big letdown for me in the last year was receiving this Pohan Lou Sardine sent to me from a collector who was going to let me check it out before I bought it. With the full disclosure that it had real problems in the action, it just was impossible to open with one hand. And of course, Pohan sounds like an amazing guy. I'm sure he would have fixed it up if I sent it to him, but I just couldn't bring myself to have my first locking custom knife be one that has problems, so that was too bad. Let's all take a moment to remember our broken iPhone screens. This one blew out of a tripod at a park when I was trying to shoot a video for this channel. Last but not least, this is the Casio STB100 Bluetooth Lap Memory Fitness Watch. I got this as an alternative to some of the more mainstream fitness watches. It connects via an app on your iPhone. And the reason why this is a gear fail is just because it is absolutely unintelligible getting this thing working properly for any type of fitness related stuff. I'm bummed because I don't have the original booklet that came with this. I got this from Woot.com and I was hoping that I could show you the ridiculous amount of information to try to get this thing working in some of its special health related modes and I just couldn't find it. But anyway, it's just it's just absolutely a parody trying to get this thing working, functioning as a fitness watch. It's basically just unfortunately obsolete in comparison to a lot of the fitness trackers out there. A great watch. I love the big display. It has a nice light. But as a fitness tracker, I'm definitely going to wear something else. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. If you thought that that was interesting, I'd really appreciate your thumbs up. Make sure to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to hear more regular updates of when things aren't working or if I should do compilation videos like this. Is there any gear item in the last year that you were really disappointed with when you got it in person or had some kind of problems that just made them unusable? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and thanks a lot for watching. And since I don't like to end things on a negative note, here is a watch that I just received today. This is the Redux Korg, a very cool military style watch with a tall beautiful bezel and a sapphire crystal and a titanium case. Thanks a lot for watching.